Air France Flight 4590 was an international charter flight, from Charles de Gaulle Airport, Paris to Newark International Airport, New York City, flown by an aerospatial back Concorde. On 25 July 2000 at 15.43 Coordinated Universal Time, the aircraft serving the flight registration FBTSC ran over debris on the runway during takeoff, blowing a tire and puncturing a fuel tank. The subsequent fire and engine failure caused the aircraft to crash into a hotel in nearby Gonesse two minutes after takeoff, killing all 109 people aboard and four more people in the hotel, with another person in the hotel critically injured. The flight was chartered by German company Peter Dielmann Cruises, and the passengers were on their way to board the cruise ship MS Deutschland in New York City for a 16-day cruise to Manta, Ecuador. It was the only fatal Concorde accident during its 27-year operational history. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Aircraft and crew. The aircraft involved was a 25-year-old aerospatial back Concorde registration FBTSC, serial number 203, that had its maiden flight on the 31st of January 1975 during testing the aircraft's registration was FWTSC. The aircraft was purchased by Air France on the 6th of January 1976. It was powered by four Rolls-Royce Olympus 593 610th turbojet engines each of which were equipped with afterburners. The aircraft's last scheduled repair took place on 21 July 2000, four days before the accident. No problems were reported during the repair. At the time of the crash, the aircraft had flown for 11,989 hours and had made 4,873 takeoff and landing cycles. The cockpit crew were The captain was 54 year old Christian Marty, who had been with Air France since 1967. He had 13,477 flight hours, including 317 hours on the Concorde. Marty had also flown the Boeing 727, 737, Airbus A300, A320, and A340 aircraft. The first officer was 50-year-old Jean Marcotte, who had been with Air France since 1971 and had 10,035 flight hours, including 2,698 hours on the Concorde. He had also flown the Aerospatial N-262, Moran Saulnier MS.760 Paris, Sud Aviation Caravelle and Airbus A300 aircraft. The flight engineer was 58-year-old Jill Giardino, who had been with Air France since 1968. He had 12,532 flight hours, including 937 hours on the Concorde. Giardino had also flown the Sud Aviation Caravelle, Dassault Falcon 20, Boeing 727, 737, and 747 including the minus 400 variant aircraft. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Crash Post-accident investigation revealed that the aircraft was at or over the maximum takeoff weight for ambient temperature and other conditions, and 810 kg 1,790 pounds over the maximum structural weight, loaded so that the center of gravity was aft of the takeoff limit. Fuel transfer during taxiing left the number 5 wing tank 94% full. A 30 cm spacer normally keeps the left main landing gear in alignment, but it had not been replaced after recent maintenance. The Bureau d'Enquête d'Analyses pour la Sécurité de l'Aviation Civile B concluded that this did not contribute to the accident. The wind at the airport was light and variable that day, and was reported to the cockpit crew as an 8 knot 15 km per hour, 9 miles per hour tailwind as they lined up on runway 26R, five minutes before the Concorde departed. A Continental Airlines McDonnell Douglas DC-1030 took off from the same runway for Newark International Airport and lost a titanium alloy strip that was part of the engine cowl, identified as a wear strip about 435 mm 17.1 in long, 29 to 34 mm 1.1 to 1.3 in wide, and 1.4 mm 0.055 in thick. 
The Concorde ran over this piece of debris during its takeoff run, cutting a tire and sending a large chunk of tire debris, 4.5 kilograms or 9.9 pounds, into the underside of the aircraft's wing at an estimated speed of 140 meters per second, 310 miles per hour. It did not directly puncture any of the fuel tanks, but it sent out a pressure shockwave that ruptured the number 5 fuel tank at the weakest point, just above the undercarriage. Leaking fuel gushing out from the bottom of the wing was most likely ignited either by an electric arc in the landing gear bay debris cutting the landing gear wire or through contact with hot parts of the engine. Engines 1 and 2 both surged and lost all power, then engine 1 slowly recovered over the next few seconds. A large plume of flame developed, and the flight engineer shut down engine 2 in response to a fire warning and the captain's command. Air traffic controller Jill Logalan noticed the flames before the Concorde was airborne and informed the flight crew. However, the aircraft had passed V1 speed, at which point takeoff is considered unsafe to abort. The plane did not gain enough airspeed with the three remaining engines as damage to the landing gear bay door prevented the retraction of the undercarriage. The aircraft was unable to climb or accelerate, and its speed decayed during the course of its brief flight. The fire caused damage to the port wing and it began to disintegrate, melted by the extremely high temperatures. Engine number one surged again, but this time failed to recover, and the starboard wing lifted from the asymmetrical thrust, banking the aircraft to over 100 degrees. The crew reduced the power on engines 3 and 4 in an attempt to level the aircraft, but they lost control due to falling speed and the aircraft stalled, crashing into the Hotelissimo Les Relais Bleurs Hotel. The hotel is near the airport and adjacent to an intersection known as La Pat de Oie de Gones, the Goosefoot of Gones for its radiating roads D902 and D317. The crew was trying to divert to nearby Paris La Bourget Airport, but accident investigators stated that a safe landing would have been highly unlikely, given the aircraft's flight path. The cockpit voice recorder CVR recorded the last intelligible words in the cockpit translated into English Copilot La Bourget, La Bourget Pilot Too late, unclear Control tower Fire service leader, correction, the Concorde is returning to runway 09 in the opposite direction. Pilot, no time, no, unclear. Copilot. Negative, we're trying La Bourget. Four switching sounds, copilot. No, unclear. Control tower. De Gaulle Tower from Fire Service Leader, can you give me the situation of the Concorde, cockpit area microphone, cam, sound of effort, end of recording. Topic. Fatalities All the passengers and crew, and four employees of the Hotelissimo Hotel, were killed in the crash. Most of the passengers were German tourists en route to New York for a cruise. Topic: Concorde grounded. Until the crash of Air France flight 4590 in 2000, Concorde had been considered among the world's safest airplanes. The crash of the Concorde contributed to the end of the aircraft's career. A few days after the crash, all Concords were grounded, pending an investigation into the cause of the crash and possible remedies. Air France's Concorde operation had been a money losing venture, but it is claimed that the aeroplane had been kept in service as a matter of national pride. British Airways claimed to make a profit on its Concorde operations. According to Jock Lowe, a Concorde pilot, up until the crash of Air France Flight 4590 at Paris, the British Airways Concorde operation made a net average profit of about £30 million, equivalent to £50 million today, a year. Commercial service was resumed in November 2001 after a £17 million, £28 million today, safety improvement service, until the remaining aircraft were retired in 2003. Topic. Investigation The official investigation was conducted by France's Accident Investigation Bureau, the B, and the final report was issued on 16 January 2002. 
Topic Conclusions The B concluded that the aircraft was overloaded by 810 kilograms, 1790 pounds above the maximum safe takeoff weight. Any effect on takeoff performance from this excess weight was negligible. After reaching takeoff speed, the tire of the number 2 wheel was cut by a metal strip, a wear strip lying on the runway, which had fallen from the thrust reverser cowl door of the number 3 engine of a Continental Airlines DC-10 that had taken off from the same runway 5 minutes previously. This wear strip had been replaced at Tel Aviv, Israel, during a sea check on the 11th of June 2000 and then again at Houston, Texas on the 9th of July 2000. The strip installed in Houston had been neither manufactured nor installed in accordance with the procedures as defined by the manufacturer. The aircraft was airworthy and the crew were qualified. The landing gear that later failed to retract had not shown serious problems in the past. Despite the crew being trained and certified, no plan existed for the simultaneous failure of two engines on the runway, as it was considered highly unlikely. Aborting the takeoff would have led to a high-speed runway excursion and collapse of the landing gear, which also would have caused the aircraft to crash. While two of the engines had problems and one of them was shut down, the damage to the plane's structure was so severe that the crash would have been inevitable, even with the engines operating normally. Topic: <laughs> Previous tire incidents. In November 1981, the American National Transportation Safety Board NTSB sent a letter of concern to the French B that included safety recommendations for Concorde. This communique was the result of the NTSB's investigations of four Air France Concorde incidents during a 20-month period from July 1979 to February 1981. The NTSB described those incidents as potentially catastrophic because they were caused by blown tires during takeoff. During its 27 years in service, Concorde had about 70 tire or wheel-related incidents, seven of which caused serious damage to the aircraft or were potentially catastrophic. 13 June 1979, the number 5 and 6 tires blew out during a takeoff from Washington Dulles International Airport. Fragments thrown from the tires and rims damaged No. 2 engine, punctured three fuel tanks, severed several hydraulic lines and electrical wires, and tore a large hole on the top of the wing over the wheel well area. 21 July 1979, another blown tire incident during takeoff from Dulles Airport. After that second incident the French Director General of Civil Aviation issued an airworthiness directive and Air France issued a technical information update, each calling for revised procedures. These included required inspection of each wheel and tire for condition, pressure and temperature prior to each takeoff. In addition, crews were advised that landing gear should not be raised when a wheel, tire problem is suspected. August 1981, British Airways BA plane taking off from New York suffered a blowout, damaging landing gear door, engine and fuel tank. November 1985, tire burst on a BA plane leaving Heathrow, causing damage to the landing gear door and fuel tank. Two engines were damaged as a result of the accident. January 1988, BA plane leaving Heathrow lost 10 bolts from its landing gear wheel. A fuel tank was punctured. July 1993, tire burst on a BA plane during landing at Heathrow, causing substantial ingestion damage to the No. 3 engine, damaging the landing gear and wing, and puncturing an empty fuel tank. October 1993, tire burst on a BA plane during taxi at Heathrow, puncturing wing, damaging fuel tanks and causing a major fuel leak. Because it is a tailless delta wing aircraft, Concorde could not use the normal flaps or slats to assist takeoff and landing, and required a significantly higher air and tire speed during the takeoff roll than an average airliner. That higher speed increased the risk of tire explosion during takeoff. When the tires did explode, much greater kinetic energy was carried by the resulting fragments, increasing the risk of serious damage to the aircraft. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Modifications and Revival. The accident led to modifications to Concorde, including more secure electrical controls, Kevlar lining to the fuel tanks, and specially developed burst resistant tires. The crash of the Air France Concorde nonetheless proved to be the beginning of the end for the type. Just before service resumed, the 11th of September attacks took place, resulting in a marked drop in passenger numbers, and contributing to the eventual end of Concorde flights. Air France stopped flights in May 2003, and British Airways ended its Concorde flights in October 2003. In June 2010, two groups attempted, unsuccessfully, to revive Concorde for heritage flights in time for the 2012 Olympics. The British Save Concorde Group, SCG, and French Group Olympus 593 were attempting to get four Rolls Royce Olympus engines at Le Bourget Air and Space Museum. Topic. Criminal investigation French authorities began a criminal investigation of Continental Airlines, whose plane dropped the debris on the runway, in March 2005, and that September, Henri Perrier, the former chief engineer of the Concorde division at Aerospatial at the time of the first test flight in 1969 and the program director in the 1980s and early 1990s, was placed under formal investigation. In March 2008, Bernard Farrett, a deputy prosecutor in Pontoise, outside Paris, asked judges to bring manslaughter charges against Continental Airlines and two of its employees, John Taylor, the mechanic who replaced the wear strip on the DC-10, and his manager Stanley Ford, alleging negligence in the way the repair was carried out. Continental denied the charges, and claimed in court that it was being used as a scapegoat by the B. The airline suggested that the Concorde was already on fire when its wheels hit the titanium strip, and that around 20 first-hand witnesses had confirmed that the plane seemed to be on fire immediately after it began its takeoff roll. At the same time charges were laid against Henry Perrier, head of the Concorde program at Aerospatial, Jacques Herubel, Concorde's chief engineer, and Claude Franson, head of DGAC, the French airline regulator. It was alleged that Perrier, Herubel and Franson knew that the plane's fuel tanks could be susceptible to damage from foreign objects, but nonetheless allowed it to fly. The trial ran in a Parisian court from February to December 2010. Continental Airlines was found criminally responsible for the disaster. It was fined €200,000 $271,628 and ordered to pay Air France €1 million. Euros. Taylor was given a 15-month suspended sentence, while Ford, Perrier, Herubel and Franson were cleared of all charges. The court ruled that the crash resulted from a piece of metal from a Continental jet that was left on the runway, the object punctured a tire on the Concorde and then ruptured a fuel tank. The convictions were overturned by a French appeals court in November 2012, thereby clearing Continental and Taylor of criminal responsibility. The Parisian court also ruled that Continental would have to pay 70% of any compensation claims. As Air France has paid out 100 million euros to the families of the victims, Continental could be made to pay its share of that compensation payout. The French Appeals Court, while overturning the criminal rulings by the Parisian Court, affirmed the civil ruling and left Continental liable for the compensation claims. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Alternative theories. British investigators and former French Concorde pilots looked at two factors that the B found to be of negligible consequence, an unbalanced weight distribution in the fuel tanks and loose landing gear. They came to the conclusion that the Concorde veered off course on the runway, which reduced takeoff speed below the crucial minimum. John Hutchinson, who had served as a Concorde captain for 15 years with British Airways, accused Air France of negligence. The Concorde had veered towards an Air France Boeing 747 carrying then French President Jacques Chirac, who was returning from the 26 G8 summit meeting in Okinawa, Japan, which was much further down the runway than the Concorde's usual takeoff point. Only then did it strike the metal strip from the DC 10. The Concorde was missing the spacer from the left main landing gear beam. 
This compromised the alignment of the landing gear and the wobbling beam and gears allowing three degrees of movement possible in any direction. The uneven load on the left leg's three remaining tires skewed the landing gear, with the scuff marks of four tires on the runway showing that the plane was veering to the left. Air France found out that its maintenance staff had not replaced or renewed the spacer, which was found in a workshop after the crash. Topic. Legacy A monument in honor of the crash victims was established at Gones. The Gones monument consists of a piece of transparent glass with a piece of an aircraft wing jutting through. Another monument, a 6,000 square meter 65,000 square feet memorial topiri in the shape of a Concorde, was established in 2006 at Matri Mori, just south of Charles de Gaulle Airport. Topic. Documentaries and other media The aircraft that crashed had previously been used in the making of the movie The Concorde Airport 79. The timeline and causes of the crash were profiled in the premiere episode of the National Geographic documentary series Seconds from Disaster. NBC aired a Dateline NBC documentary on the crash, its causes, and its legacy on the 22nd of February 2009. Channel 4 and Discovery Channel Canada aired a documentary called Concord's Last Flight. Smithsonian Channel aired a 90-minute documentary in 2010. The accident and subsequent investigation were featured in the seventh episode during season 14 of documentary series Mayday also known as Air Crash Investigation titled Concord, Up in Flames, first broadcast in January 2015.